present good morning to everyone happy sabbath and welcome to redemption seven day adventist church sabbath school where we've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb we are located here off hannah road where our pastor is pastor dr peter joseph we want to send a special welcome to all of you who are joining joining us live on youtube or facebook as well we are indeed elated and delighted that you have decided to join us today as we come together to worship and study God's holy word. At this time, Elder Nigel Strong will come to give the opening prayer and lead us in the opening song, which is hymn number 625, Higher Ground. The scripture reading which will follow will be read by Sister Bobby Bethel and is taken from Jude 1, 17 through 25. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church say thank you, Jesus. Let us all stand as we solicit the Lord in prayer. Let us all stand. Our kind, gracious, most loving Heavenly Father, as we come before this, your holy presence on your holy Sabbath day, we humbly ask that you may forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. A right mind, dear Heavenly Father. A mind to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We pray in a special way for the Sabbath schools here and around the world. We pray a special blessing upon the Sabbath schools, dear Heavenly Father. We pray for every person who is participating this morning. Those who are on the panel, those who are participating through songs, or true scripture readings, Father, dear, I ask, O oh God, to let your Holy Spirit dwell with us. Bless each and every person here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hymn number 625, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upper way. New heights I'm gaining every day.
scripture reading is taken from Jude 1, verses 17 to 25. And it reads, But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their, uh, their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen, and thank you, Elder Strawn and Sister Bobby, for the opening prayer, song, and the scripture reading. Again, I want to wish all of you a happy and blessed Sabbath. So glad to see you in the sanctuary, and of course, those who are joining us live. I'm sure we would have had an interesting week, because we know what took place. But to God be the glory and great things he has done. And we will move on with God on our side, most definitely. As we studied this week's lesson, The Restless Prophet, I realized that this is a topic that many of us can relate to, because many of us are restless, troubled, and not at peace in today's world, especially as we see what's happening around us. So the question is to you, are you restless? Are you lacking peace? At this time, do you feel that you are experiencing trouble in your life? Are you running away from God instead of running towards him? Well, many of us experience restlessness, but is this what God wants for us? In John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Therefore, whenever you are experiencing any of these negative things in your life, here's what you and I should do. In times of trouble, always pray to God. He hears and he answers your prayers. When you are restless and you don't know what to do, Turn to the word of God. Study it daily and apply it to your life. Psalms 119, 105 reads, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you're experiencing trouble in your life, know that God will deliver you. He is still in control and he will help you overcome your restlessness. There was a popular gospel song some years ago that said, when trouble's in your life, sing praises. So saints, let us always turn our hearts to God, despite the whirlwind that is going on around us. Amen? Amen. All right. At this time, we get to the meat of Sabbath school, which is our Sabbath school panel discussion, where we go deep into the word of God. For our Sabbath School panel, we have Sister Patricia Clare as our moderator, and joining her will be Brother Romanoff Bethel, Brother Edward Hanna, and visiting from Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church is Elder Elgin Heber. At this time, I turn it over to Sister Clare and the panelists. I know plenty of people was restless, <laughs> but uh, 
Thank God we made it through. <laughs> now we're going to discuss the topic, the restless prophet. And, uh, it's a very interesting uh, subject and story. And I'd like for us to see how we can best pick this to pieces and how it can benefit our lives. Uh, one question I have, if you were to give a short summary or a sentence on what you, how you perceive the book of Jonah to be, what would it be? You want to convince me to read this book, okay? What would you call this, how would you advertise this book in a short summary or short sentence to me so I can be interested? Go ahead. Um, I, I I think Jonah covers so many things from the spiritual to the um, creative world. Um, there's all kind of aspects that come out of Jonah. So you, you, get, you get so much different um, uh, angles that the story and uh, the events come from. It, it, it's worth checking out. Okay, all right, go ahead. What Actually, you got? I was thinking about Jude when you were saying Jonah, but when I think about it, it's, it's the same answer. And I think it's for all the books of the Bible. It's about the gospel. Um, it's about sides. And uh, like I've been saying every time I come here, uh, it's either synonyms, same things, or antonyms, opposites. And, you know, if you're restless, mm -hmm. the opposite is being at peace or at rest. You know, uh, we hear people, I always have issue as of late, especially with people saying R.I.P. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I try to get some of my colleagues to, to, to think about it because, I mean, it wasn't until I heard my father one time say, well, they can't rest no other way. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it didn't hit me until then because you hear things mm -hmm. and you just think, okay, that's what you say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes even when you mention it to people that, way, hey, think about this. Does this really make sense? Who, who, in, who are you speaking to, actually? <laughs> but, you know, I think it's all about whose side you're on. Are, okay. you, are you in Christ? Mm -hmm. And we know there's only one other side. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if you're not with him, he said, if you're not with me, you're against me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say... If you want to see a story that shows God's love to both the sinner and the saint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? the sinner and the saint. Read the book of Jonah. Because, of course, here you see the Ninevites were not professing any faith in God at all. I mean, at all. So that's the expanse we realize that the Ninevites, these were some very wicked people. Mm -hmm. But here you have the prophet of God, the saint, professing a belief in God and still going astray, yes. doing the same thing that Ninevites did. And here yes. you see God actually interacting with the two, I would say, classes of people mm -hmm. in the earth. Okay, that's good advertisement, right? We get some good advertisement. <laughs> so the book of Jonah, we could sell it to somebody who don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. But um, anyhow, there's something else I wanted to bring up, but I, could, I think I'm coming down to that later on. But I consider myself as a workaholic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. What do you, what do you, what do you <laughs> explain to me what a restless person is in a nutshell? Just explain to me what is it, what is a restless person? The prophet was a restless prophet. Explain to me, you don't go too, too much in bringing out the uh, quarterly, I mean the, the daily um, lesson, but explain to me in a nutshell, a couple words, what is it? Uh, um, because I work so much, am I restless? I, I'm just reiterating what I just said. I yeah. mean, either you are at peace yeah. and you're resting, okay. or you're not. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Back to why, why we say to people when they die, rest in peace. I mean, it just, anyway. <laughs> that, that bothers you, right? Yeah. It bothers me too. <laughs> but it's yes. as if you're saying there's another way to rest yes. or something. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Go ahead. I mean, you can be a workaholic, right? And still be at peace. Yes. To some degree. Well, when you take the true source of peace out of the equation, you will be restless because there'll always be this emptiness, this thing. You, you this, always this, run in to do something, to yeah. get something for pleasure or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's this, this, I call it this God-shaped void yes. in the heart that yes. only God can fill. And when that's filled by God, 
regardless of your circumstances, even if you're a workaholic, the Holy Spirit will be like, stop, you need to rest now. You, know, yes. you see what I'm saying? And you will actually rest. Yes, yes. So you, you see that in Jesus' life. Yes. Jesus could have been called a workaholic because oh, he was always going, mm -hmm. always doing, up early in the morning, mm -hmm. communing with his father. But those things brought him peace. Yes. He was doing the will of his, father. Will of his father. And when he needed to rest, even a storm couldn't bother him <laughs> yeah. when he needed to rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when he chose to rest, <laughs> yes. even a storm couldn't yes. bother him. Yes, all right, so I feel good then. I'm a workaholic. <laughs> okay, now Sunday's lesson, right? Running away. What was Jonah's reason for running away? Come on, yeah, I, I, exploit that a little. What was, what was his reason for running away? Jonah just didn't like the Ninevites, pure and simple. He and couldn't why, and stand why, why the was, prejudice. Why was that? Why was that? I mean, go on, go on. Go on. Well, they, they, were, they were enemies of, God, of the people of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so in his mind, I don't, I don't, they don't deserve to be mm -hmm. liked by me. They're getting what they deserve from me, mm -hmm. in his mind. Yeah, so. Yeah. And I, I agree with Brother Elgin because when you look at the Ninevites, I mean, there's a difference between what they say, um, you don't kick a man when you're down, right? <laughs> but the Ninevites will push you down, and then they will still kick you and beat you, and they'll spit on you, and they'll still insult you. They already have you beaten. I mean, these are some really cruel people, and, and Jonah's mind is like, you know what? These people don't deserve to hear about the good news of God, yeah. and I'm not going to be the one to do it. He had his mind made up. I am not going to do this. Yeah. Uh, my, the first thing comes to my mind is what was he thinking that he could actually run? I mean, <laughs> if you're not doing it, don't do it. But what, what's the point of running? I mean, what's the point of going someplace else as if God, <laughs> as if you could hide? Yeah. You know, you it's just, hide. you know, it's just, so my, I'm my wondering about his concept of who God really was. Yes. I mean, it's really. You know, that's, that's puzzling to me. Why I think it's, think. Juna, Juna, you, you know, um, Just you, sometimes it's good to, like, put these stories and put ourselves yeah, in them, yep. you know. Juna hated the Ninevites for a serious, serious reason. The, the Assyrians and them from, you know, we studied mm -hmm. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And he hated them because of what they have done to his ancestors. All right? And I guess, why would God actually want to save them? You know, and um, I guess that was I one of his reasons. I guess he felt that if he get, if he go the opposite way, God would say, okay, I'll find somebody else. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. When you look at the story of Jonah too, right, there's a difference, like, like, like um, Brother Hannah said. We can say in our hearts when the Holy Spirit prompts us to do something, we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we just stay there, just not do it. But here you see an added um, measure of defiance. Where Jonah says, I'm not going to do it. And to prove I'm not going to do it, I'm going in the other direction mm -hmm. where you sent me to go. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? So it was not just he was just saying, I'm not going to do it. But he had this act of rebellion where he is showing God, mm -hmm. I am not going where you sent me. You mm -hmm. say go so and so, I'm going to show you I am my own man, like Brother Sand saying, and I'm going to do my own thing, and I'm going down this way. As you have some, if you have some, no? Okay. Um, uh, Jonah's, Jonah was hoping to run away from God, yes. And let's, let's, and where did he go? Heading down to Tarsus, right? And let's look at the situation with him sleeping in the boat. Okay? Elaborate on, on, on that situation for me, because someone mentioned rest when you really rest. <laughs> you know, you, you, you could sleep, when, uh, Elton, when Christ rests. Mm -hmm. Sleep through it like... So, to me, how he was able to sleep through all of that stormy, stormy weather if he was a restless individual. Mm. Uh, I mean, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. That goes back to what Edward said about his state of mind. Because... Yeah. He was so comfortable in his decision to go from God that he was comfortable enough to go to sleep. That's a scary place to be. That's yeah. right. It's a scary place to be. Mm -hmm. In disobedience, I am so sad in my disobedience, I just yeah, relax. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with Woo, that. yeah. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he yeah. didn't even understand how serious his condition was because he was content to be outside mm -hmm. of the will of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's, a, that's a scary situation. He was actually, when I studied this lesson, he was actually in the same state at that time 
as these people who he was preaching to, or yes. supposed to preach to. Yes. Yeah. 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 Think, and maybe even worse, because he knew better. Yeah, because he feels he's okay. <laughs> yeah. He knew better. He, he knew. knew better. He God knew has God. used him before. He knew better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you think that Jonah was being presumptuous in his sin? Saying, even though I'm going to go against the will of God, God still ain't going to destroy me. God. I mean, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying, right? Maybe he may have been thinking, because I'm a prophet and I've done this thing for God before, right? Mm -hmm, and I'm rebelling, mm -hmm. God is going to maybe turn his, yeah. change his mind and My get somebody else, like Brother Elgin said, yeah. so I can lay down and rest. And I know God is going to do his own thing, so I'm going to do my own thing. And wow. he's trying to manipulate, you know, and it reminds me of what says so so what? Yeah. Manipulating oh. God, like, this is what I think you should do. Mm. Yeah. Just destroy them one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's mm. as if you're trying to tell God what to do. And it reminds me of the story in the lesson about the disciples. Yeah. And they said, let's call down fire yeah. as Elijah did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> God said, you if, don't if know you what, spirit me, you, I can destroy what, you. what spirit you're speaking of. Right. You know, I didn't come to destroy people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's their concept that, hey, He's on our side, so yeah. y'all over there. You, yeah. you bad, get rid of you. Yeah, he ain't come yeah. for y'all, he come for us. Yeah. And, and, and we have that, some of us have that mentality. Uh, uh, today. Yes. Today. today we That's why that I say let's put the story sometimes in, in our day, because some, yes. some of us, when we actually say we're going to do some outreach or evangelism, who do we look for? Mm -hmm. Certain people, mm -hmm. ain't nothing happening with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we tend to look for persons who we feel that may be easy, reachable, or persons who we feel that might have more sense than somebody else. That kind of like, come on, be real. Well, maybe it would benefit the church. Yes, it would yeah. benefit the church. And, and this isn't what we should be doing. We should be no. asking God to lead us to those right. who, yes. who, are, who will be receptive. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we could, you know, save some time. Because you might be thinking, okay, I think, I think this is the one, but it might but be it might not be. Mm -hmm. the truth. Yes. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. 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 So that, that, that's, how, that's how it is sometimes. We mm -hmm. have to actually really put these stories in, in, in our day right. mm -hmm. and look at ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, now, Jonah was, uh, Jonah was fast asleep, and then he decided that, listen, he, he, he ain't checking, of course. He fast asleep. What happened? Give me the, give me the learn down with the story. What happened to the, the boat, the sailors? Come on. Well, here, here I want you to again. start elaborating on, on. Here again, I'm yes. surprised um, at the, who we would call the pagans or the heathens. Mm -hmm. Yes. They right away figured that, like, hey, something right here. Yeah. <laughs> where, does, where does storm just pop up out of nowhere? Yeah. You know? Something supernatural is mm -hmm. going on here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they were looking in the right direction. Let's Everybody, why are you praying to your God? You're down here sleeping. Yeah. Pray to your God. Call yeah. on your God. Let's find out what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you notice the first thing was let's pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, with, and, and, and sometimes we tend to actually do everything else in our power before we decide to make up our mind that we're going to actually pray to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But those hidden sailors decided that, listen, let's pray. Yeah. All right. And that's an interesting thought, right? Because, like you say, sometimes we come um, experiences and trials come our way, mm -hmm. and we do everything but pray. Mm -hmm. But the guy out there who is not professing to be a seventh day Adventist, maybe a part of another denomination, trials come his way, and he is out there in sackcloth and ashes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he is pleading with his God. He doesn't care who hears him, or she doesn't care. Who has them? They're playing with their God mm -hmm. as far as they know that their God is able to do certain things. Mm -hmm. Where us who are supposed to have the relationship, we laying down sleeping, <laughs> right? During the storm, instead of finding out from God, well, we know the storm is because <laughs> yes. of our thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Instead of confessing to God yes. and allowing him to Allow, allowing him to let his work be done or carried out in our lives. In our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And Jonah finally, finally, when they wake him up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing how God uses everything to point <laughs> us in this direction because they draw lots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, they were superstitious. But that's how they did things. That's and God yeah. said, okay, yeah. I'm going to use 
what you have, mm. I'm going to meet you where you are. Yes. yes. Meet yeah. you where you are. That's, I, I that's the wonderful thing about like God. You know, I, all I thought about is, boy, now they definitely believe in superstition now. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they didn't have the right gods, but they, they had belief. They yeah. right. yes. did believe in something. Right. something. And they did believe that there was a solution, and they were doing what they knew how to, mm. to find out what is less straw lots, mm. let's find out what's going, going on. on. Yep. Mm-hmm. And fall on Jonah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh-huh. and now, how, how, do we, how do we get out of this? And they still, even though they knew God, Jonah was the mm-hmm. issue, yes. they still, all, all there was about pray to your God. Yes. yes. And then Jonah had to come up with the, the, the real answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Show me over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they still tried to, you know, save the ship with him. But yes. Mm-hmm. They was refusing they to do so. It don't look like it could work, so we yeah. have to. Yeah. You, you think they, the, as soon as he said that, they would pick him up and toss him over? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, they... They wanted to, to get through this storm with him on the boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. They wanted to really save his life. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't want to do and that. And there again, uh-huh. what's, what's the heart of you know, these people? Yeah. They were, God looks mm-hmm. at the heart. Mm-hmm. You know? So yep. someone might be sincerely on the wrong path. Mm-hmm. But, God but they might, have a good heart. God mm-hmm. looks at the heart. Mm-hmm. And yes. they might know that, hey, if they had known the truth, exactly. they would do it. Yeah. yeah, we can't judge. Yep. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and what a witness! Uh, what a witness that is now. Of course, Jonah again tossed overboard, and whoosh. yep, and that was it. Yeah, and Jonah, come. Jonah was testifying even, even unrelent, <laughs> what, what, re- reluctantly, <laughs> he was was preaching to these fellas on the boat. And, yeah, and think about this too, right? When those guys got back to court. They had a story to tell. They were willing to do now, which Jonah was unable to do because they go into their sailor friends and say, man, listen, we went through this thing, and this guy, this prophet of the true God, who I think I'm going to decide to worship, right, because he has truly revealed himself to me in this truly awesome way. Mm -hmm. Master of the sea. Yeah, exactly, right? This has got to be the true God, Mm -hmm. right? So they're now willing to do which Jonah was unable to do, <laughs> unwilling yeah. to do. Unwilling yeah. to do. Yep. Uh, they, yeah. they went back and most likely that was a story to tell. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? it's, it's amazing to see that this, this one little thing, this prophet cost, <laughs> I, I, all, to me, looking at Jonah's this story, God used his disobedience to reach many. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that's how it looked to me because I know those soldiers was, in a, was a different person, they were different people all together when they left. Yeah. And the difference was they were praying, they said pray to your gods, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had a God for the sea, a God mm-hmm. for the wind, yeah, yeah, a God yeah. for the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Jonah say, I, I belong to the God, I fear the God of who heaven. Who created everything. Yes. Yes. The God who is, is one God that mm-hmm. created everything. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so a lot of times um, man, uh, many persons have this idea that there are many gods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's one true God. One true but God. after after they threw him overboard, after they tried to really save him and realize that this ain't working, so they reluctantly threw it. And before they did it, they asked God to please don't <laughs> lay this sin before <laughs> us, you know. And 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 even after they did it, they found a way to give sacrifice to mm-hmm. God. So I mean, it tells you something that right there and then. God had reached those yes, people yes, yes. right mm-hmm. there and then. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was really something else to yeah. see <laughs> these fellas just accept it right there and then. Mm-hmm. And, and it shows that there are sometimes some people may take longer to accept mm-hmm, Christ. Mm-hmm. And other times some people will just, that's it. Yep. This is it. I walk in it. Mm-hmm. Yes. All yep. right. We do have those situations sometimes here in our day. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Monday's lesson, right? I just wanted to point oh. out, in, as we still, uh-huh. um, in that same, I know we're passing through over where God still performing miracles uh-huh. with Jonah now uh-huh. in the water. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. The Bible yes. say, yeah. um, a big um, fish. Yeah. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now, oh, before <laughs> you go on there, right? It, to me, Jonah thought he could have, it was indirectly commit suicide. Right. That's, oh, that's, that's, okay. that's, that's my thinking. He wanted that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what could drive him so much to want to actually just die <laughs> rather than be obedient? <laughs> you know, I mean, we spoke about it earlier on his mindset. But, you know, a prophet of God who God has used before, 
who speaks, who God speaks to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is willing to actually indirectly kill himself. <laughs> well, I get somebody to throw him in the water to kill himself. And then, of course, God probably, God knew the end from the beginning, so mm -hmm. the big fish swallow him. And this, this is one of the reasons why I asked this fella here to actually come here. <laughs> because right there and then, yeah. people feel that the story of Jonah is a myth. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yep. And there are things that we have to really exploit and explain. And one of them is what fish <laughs> will, will swallow a man whole yes. yeah. and still spit him out three days later? Yeah. Come on. Go so on. so if, we, if we just take natural biology, right? right. Um, there are fish out there that can swallow human beings. <laughs> um, we, we know for sure they're, they're massive um, 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 groupers. Mm -hmm. um, one that is known as the Goliath grouper, used to be called a Jewfish, mm -hmm. grows to uh, up to a thousand pounds, can be eight feet long today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, now, that's not to say what they were back then, back then mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But these fish swallow everything whole. They, yep. they don't chew anything. They swallow the whole thing, the whole um, prey goes into the, the fish's belly and stays there. Of course, natural biology again will say that, hey, a man can't survive in there because of the acids and all of that, blah, 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 blah. Yes, and that's another thing. And this is why the Bible says, God prepared yep. a great fish. Oh, okay. God prepared gotcha. a great This was a no everyday <laughs> Goliath group. Of. This is one that God had his special touch on. Yes. Yeah. Because it made a home for his prophet mm -hmm. when he needed it. So yeah. we have to... Um, get beyond just the natural science and understand that this God of the heavens and earth who created everything can do all things. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess they'll have to call the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace a yeah, myth, yeah, yeah. A myth yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there are many stories, I think, in the Bible. <laughs> Daniel in the lion's mm -hmm. den. I mean, there are stories where we know God just takes over mm -hmm. and he does... <laughs> Oh, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Yeah, I no. mean, you know, it, he doesn't even have to, I don't even think he has to prepare a fish. He could just say, okay, <laughs> you know, he could speak to <laughs> the elements and it just happens. Mm -hmm. It's like, you put, you were thrown in fire and mm -hmm. you walk up and down <laughs> and only ropes burn. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. How do you, you know, you can't fathom these things. Mm -hmm. It's just faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are many stories in the Bible like that, but. I guess that's why, like you say, many people look at the Bible as some kind of fairy tale or yes. whatever. Yes. But uh, sometimes, just lack faith. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes if we try to explain too much, we are eliminating the faith element. Mm. You know what I mean? Sometimes we try, we figure we have to be able to explain how the fire burned mm. <laughs> the rope and not the men, and they didn't even come out smelling like smoke. Yeah. Or how exactly was the mechanics done where God prepared this fish? Did he have air conditioning in this fish? Was there a fridge with food and water? Was there bathroom facilities and all the things? Sometimes we take things too far just instead of saying, you know what? Yes, the natural world, like Brother Eldon says, yeah, it's possible, right? It's quite possible, but the guy was going to die anyway. So it's a fish volume, maybe a few minutes later. Mm -hmm. No oxygen, um, acids, and whatever have you. So we have to say, God prepared the fish. And we, some, we got to leave it as that. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? And just let faith take over. Yeah. And I think it's, you, first you have to believe that God exists. Mm -hmm. For people mm -hmm. who don't believe in God, of course they're not going to believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Monday's lesson, right? Uh, the three, a three day rest, right? <laughs> now, now, I look at that, a three day rest. Now, what three day rest Jonah, Jonah got? You think he really rested? Um, um, explain, explain Jonah's experience in your own words and comparing it with the situations we sometimes find ourselves in. Here we have Jonah was swallowed mm -hmm. by a fish. He wanted to die. He don't want to go where God wanted him to go. What three-day rest he had in that fish? So here we have the prophet, right? Rebellious prophet. Doesn't want to go. God takes him out of his element, out of his comfort zone, mm -hmm. 
put him somewhere where he can actually stop and really sit down and think through. He said he couldn't sit down and over. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you. But you see what I'm saying, right? But so where, where, where he can really sit down and think through. Okay, let me really analyze my actions. Let me really, really, and truly look at my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he does it. God does it. Does sometimes too. Sometimes he takes away everything that distracts us mm -hmm. and puts us in a situation. I mean, we could look at the COVID scene when it first came along, right? Mm -hmm. No work. No distraction. You're only home with TV. You have now time to sit down and really and truly contemplate, you know what, God? This, this is really the last days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You have a time to really... Firm, confirm in your mind and make a firm belief that you know what, God, whatever happens, I am going to trust you. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes my way, yeah, in the past I may have sinned, you know, I may have to confess to God, but whatever comes my way, dear Lord, I will trust you. Mm -hmm. And God does this to us every single, at the end of every day, mm -hmm. when we come to our night rest, and every single week, on Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it's an analogy to um, the baptism and the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and all of that. And the, the, the amazing thing to me is that even though he was supposed to have died and come up a new man, he still had issues when, mm -hmm. when, he, when yeah. he entered yeah. the river. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was still in that ungodly state where he was up. Angry with God. Mm, yes. mm -hmm. Why you do you know? say? Why do you so, say? Why do you say after that? After this you think conversion it has to experience, he still had issues. Still, still why do you say? It, do you think it has the analogy of death? Well, you know, three days. It says as Jonah was in yeah. the belly of the waves, three days, three nights, and Christ would be in the belly of the earth, three days and three nights. We know this is the time. I guess you could call it the Sabbath. Okay. Rest and. Okay. That's the symbolism I mm -hmm. see there. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. he's dead mm -hmm. in all intents and purposes. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And then he turns and repents in yes. a way. But yes. like I said, later on in the story, yep. we see he's yeah. like gone back again. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah and so, as well, um, I was thinking how whenever we get away from, from Nassau, Mm -hmm. And the busyness of Nassau, you go to the family yeah. island, you really, you really tend to, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and really start to think and ponder, and it gives you time to, to commune with God in a, in a special way, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to when you're around your work and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me, like I said earlier, how Jesus did that so often. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning, or all night he spent in prayer mm -hmm. with his father. Um, and so... Um, we do well to learn from that experience mm -hmm. of Jonah, but more importantly, from how Jesus lived his life, mm -hmm. uh, getting away as much as possible yes. to, to commune okay. and think. Uh -huh. I can speak from my own experience, right? When I was in a majesty of service, every year, sometimes more often, you would have to go on what they call detachment, where you got to go to a key cell or... Go to what? Detachment. Oh. It basically was just 80 year old on the key in the middle of nowhere for a month. Mm. Oh. And during that time, I found that I was able to read. You know what I mean? Really read the spirit of prophecy, really read the Bible, and really confirm in my mind that there is a God, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. who loves us, mm -hmm. and all these things. But, and I miss that. I really miss that. Even when you go on patrol, you have this downtime. Yes. Where there's nobody really harassing you. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you have a lot of time to really contemplate. And Jonah had this time to no really communication, contemplate. No he's in nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he really has time to really and truly sit down and contemplate about the greatness and the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Jonah talks about the water passing him, the weeds <laughs> around him. He was, it is as if he was just confined mm -hmm. to a spot and he could not move. And, and I, I asked you all to elaborate on it because I wanted to hear, want you to tell folks what, what 
Jonah's story tells us about the detours in our life. Because Jonah took detours <laughs> to actually run away from God. And we have young people today doing the same mm. thing. Detours running. And detours sometimes can leave some bad yes. scarring. Yep. Yep. Um, what can we tell young folks, old folks, older folks who still <laughs> run away from God? Um, in, in just one or two words, what could we tell them looking at Jonah's life? and what he had to go through. Well, for me, the one thing that uh, uh, I think Eddie pointed to it earlier is from Jonah's story, I see the grace of God. No matter how mm -hmm. far Jonah decided to run, mm -hmm. the grace of God yeah. was running after him. Yes. <laughs> running after him. And I'm saying, why well, God, you are so patient. Mm. Yeah. Because you know, humanly, we would have given up on Jonah a long time. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> long Forget time. that, really, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we can find somebody else to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it ain't yeah. make no sense. It, this dude ain't making no sense. No. <laughs> Let's find somebody else, right? But mm. not God. God kept going after him. Mm. And for our young people, God does the same. Mm -hmm. Because he did the same for me. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know he did the same for me. And so I, I pray that our young people hold on to, I mean, as much of their faith as, as they have, uh, you know, and allow God to still work in them. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't, don't give yourself totally over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I wish you didn't, you weren't where you were if you're not in a relationship with God, God now. But the thing about this, God still loves. Amen. He never stops. His, his very nature is love. He can't mm -hmm. do nothing else. Mm -hmm. And he will pursue you till the very end. Mm -hmm. And it's possible like we do a lot of times when things get rough. You notice in verse 2, Jonah says, I cried by reason of mine affliction. affliction yes, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I knew he was in a hopeless, was situation, in a hopeless situation and he had to turn He was finished. To God. He had one place <laughs> to look to. He didn't necessarily want to, mm -hmm. but he had, like you said, he could have less lay down and die. Yes. Or he could have cried and say, hey, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. But it was because, I think, he started off. Because of my situation, this is why I'm calling you. Yeah. I'm not really wanting to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, but I in the situation now. Out of now, love you know? or, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you said, God is still merciful. God yes. probably knew that he would yeah. still have yeah, work still to do with him. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he's, he's trying to teach him some lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the lesson, I think, Psalms 139, it speaks when the Psalms is speaking about, where can I go to hide from God? If I make up my bed in hell... <laughs> If I, if I do this, if I do this in the nighttime, if I go to heaven, I can't escape the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing depending on your relationship with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you feel like the prophet rebelling just for the sake of rebelling, right? And God is being patient and long-suffering with you, that's a good thing, right? But if you are like Lucifer, who probation has closed. Mm. That's really not a good thing, knowing that sooner or later, I can't hide from God, and sooner or later, I'm going to have to meet him face to face. Yeah. yeah. You see? Yeah. So we on Tuesdays, right? And Tuesdays is, I think, mission accomplished, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Jonah gets spits out of the fish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. heads to the city. Finally, he got to the city and he decide, okay, let me do what God calls me to do. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting to notice that Jonah just said, listen, yeah, people. <laughs> he entered the city and he telling them, listen, he cried out, yet 40 days and you're all gone. Mm -hmm. Destroy. Okay? Now, I figure Jonah's one of the greatest evangelists <laughs> going, right? But no, no text here is saying that Jonah tell him, look here, repent, or nothing like that. He's just saying, look here, after 40 days, you're all gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, all right? Mm -hmm. And he gets this, he, he, the, 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 city, the city did a complete turnaround, even though Jonah didn't tell him, repent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that? What do you get into that? Because to me, this is another thing that I looked at and say, you know, the whole city, 100%, mm -hmm. decided to turn. I, 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 asked, I asked my husband the question, what, what, they was just tired of sinning? 
or, or what, you know? Come on, explain to me what are your thoughts when you saw that, um, the whole city repenting. Remember now, sin brings restlessness. That's true. Yes. You see? No matter how much you try in your sinfulness to fill that God-shaped void, nothing is going to fill that God-shaped void but no. God. No. And who knows how many millions have gone to their graves trying to with fill that void. that void with things that just can't fill it. Yeah. You see? So somehow Jonah's message through the, through the um, inspiration also of the Holy Spirit, because people may think, well, Jonah did this on his own. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit may have been working with them years in advance. You see know what I'm saying? Jonah may just have been the catalyst to get things going. Mm -hmm. You see? But when men and women are presented with the choice, you can try to fill this void on your own mm -hmm. and be continuously restless, mm -hmm. or you can let God come in and fill the void that's there for him and be at peace. <laughs> Logic would say, go with, go with God and be at peace. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there'll be, there'll be those who will still rebel, but then they're making a choice to reject peace. I'm saying but these people decided, you know what? We have tried this way, everything right? We have, we have been down this road millions of times. Mm -hmm. Let's try this new road and see what's happened. Let's see. Um, yeah, the Lord says He's gonna destroy us, but let's see what happens if we repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm saying let's give God a chance, let's mm -hmm. see what happens if we repent. Let's see if He truly is mm -hmm. the God who we may have heard about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying. Um, yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's about belief, it's about faith, and it's about choice, especially mm -hmm. choice because um, God could force, you know, but we have to understand that, hey, this is the real test of whether we're working in the spirit of, in the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. My issue with, you know, as we know how governments are operating and how they will continue to mm -hmm. operate, mm -hmm. it's about taking away choice and freedom from people mm -hmm. you know america was founded on the freedom to if you want to have your choice to worship satan the, you're free to do it you you bring that up right <laughs> and you notice the king actually decreed mm -hmm. did he take away the choice <laughs> and freedom yeah i guess you could say that's that's you know <laughs> yeah i guess you could say <laughs> that's a dictatorship as well yeah even mm -hmm. though he was doing the right and nebuchadnezzar did the same thing mm -hmm. when, yes mm -hmm. when daniel did and uh -huh, you see he uh -huh. gone back he uh -huh. went back, you uh -huh. know. Uh -huh. It doesn't, if it's not free will and conscience, yes. it's not sincere. Just like with Jonah and the fish. Mm -hmm. Did he mm -hmm. really repent? He was repenting, did yeah. He, did he really pe repent yeah. or mm -hmm. did he repent out of the circumstance? So God is always looking mm -hmm. at your, okay, we have law that is legal law mm -hmm. and it's always up, uh, enforced mm -hmm. right? by, by, it has to be enforced. Yeah. But there's also something called natural law. And the Bible mm. teaches us this is the type of law that we are under. Mm -hmm. The law of love, mm -hmm. where it comes from the heart. Right. You know, I don't need no list of rules when I'm operating in Christ out of love. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no need to write down any ten yeah. commandments. Right. Yeah. Right. So this is where people get mixed up with this law and grace and mm -hmm. all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. It's the motive. Right. Mm -hmm. right behind mm -hmm. what you're doing. What you're doing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The law, the law of God, the law of love is other-centered. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so when, whenever we act like God, because God is always other-centered, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's why he exists, because he's other-centered. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, he created uh, beings and, and worlds to love and to express mm -hmm. his love. Mm -hmm. So there's no law against other-centeredness. There's no law against me feeding you. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. no law against me loving you and clothing you. And no mm -hmm. law against that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if, like Eddie said, we operate in that, we'll be, we'll be fine. The other thing I, I um, learned from this lesson this week was 
when it says that Nineveh was a great city of three days journey, I yes. thought it would take three days to get there. No. But the lesson says it, it was so is. big, <laughs> it take you three days to get from one side to the next. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. three days and, to get around. and the Bible says that Jonah went in a day's journey, right? Yes. So my imagination is he's getting, and for one whole day, he's just preaching, preaching, mm -hmm. preaching as yes. he walked through. Yes. And it does say that the people repented. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not Even before the, the message got to the king, the, king yes. the people had mm -hmm. repented yes. and believed God. Mm -hmm. So the king only decreed what they had already yeah. tell him. decided in yeah. their lives. It didn't sound right? like he actually heard directly from Jonah. Yeah. He heard from the people. That's what it sounds mm -hmm. like. Yes. And, and he was convinced that, you this, know, this hey, this message right? must be, <laughs> this must be true. My whole, my whole contrary repenting. I better yeah. get, yeah. I better I get it on this mic. Let me ride this way with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 But see, no, but brother, that brings a good point, right? Because remember, God wants to save. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he takes a delight in, in saving men and women. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to destroy us. Mm -hmm. He wants to save us. Mm -hmm. And we, um, what it was Abraham and Lot, Sodom and Gomorrah, where Abraham was interceding with, with, the, the, with God, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. From 50 down to 5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and still. It's like God was looking, God was like, Abraham, give me an excuse uh -huh. not, not to destroy to say, yeah. the people. That's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was the same thing that happened to Nineveh. Ninevites, give me an excuse not to destroy y'all. You know what I'm saying? If enough of you are, yeah, I don't know if God had a number in his mind or whatever, but some, he was like, give me an excuse to save you all. And I think we can also be correct in saying that the Bible teaches that all has been saved, mm. but does all choose, choose to, to take the salvation that yeah. they have been mm. provided yeah. for them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Comes right back down to choice again. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. These fellas know about past experience and and how God protected his people and what God has done for these people. You think that had something to do with, with the king definitely accepting the call of repentance for everybody, sackcloth and ashes. Um, you think that had something to do with it? Or is it was it just what they, what they hear from Jonah? Yeah, we, it's in the I, minority, but in the Bible there are cases where the king did the right thing. Usually, the, the percentage <laughs> is on the other side. They get puffed up. Mm -hmm, they, get, mm -hmm. they let the position and the power get to their head. And you know, today is, is no different. Yeah. But you have those few yeah. who even if only for a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they humble yeah. themselves and mm -hmm. they say, you know what? There's a king of kings. Let's do this. Yeah. There's yeah. a king mm -hmm. of kings. I have a comment and from the audience. Um, Sabbath school. What I wanted to say is that in the story of Jonah, right, y'all were saying whether or not the king decreed and all that stuff. But first of all, we, I see myself as Jonah or us as Jonah. This church was given a special message, end time message. And we are busy running. We are lackadaisical. We scared of persecution. Does God have to prepare a big fish for us? Does he have to have the stones and the rock, the crowd and ask for, for people to know? that it's coming down to a choice of loyalty, whether we're gonna serve him or serve Caesar. Think about it. So don't beat up on Jonah. Are we like Jonah? Any comments from, the, from, from my Yeah, def definitely that is what the lesson is showing us, that we can, I, the text came to mind, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Not because we say we are Christians and we go to church, mm -hmm. that we should feel that we are okay. The story, like so many other stories in the Bible, the prodigal son, you know, it shows you that the one that you thought was lost mm -hmm. is actually in a better position when it boils mm -hmm. down to it than the one who is, didn't even go anywhere. Yeah. You yep. know, so definitely we have to examine ourselves and see, we talk about spreading the gospel and preaching the gospel, yeah. but we have to first accept it for ourselves. <laughs> How can we share it if we haven't even mm -hmm. bought into it? Yeah. So it has to start with the individual. Okay, now I go, I go, I go diverse just a little, right? <laughs> now those of you who know me know me that I'm an animal lover. <laughs> okay, now this king <laughs> decided even he dog, cow, goat, whatever, 
must be in sackcloth and ashes <laughs> and, and, and more like repent. Come on, tell me how we can do that now. Come on. What do you think about animals actually getting involved in I, this? I think the Bible in the commandments talks about yeah. the ox or, the, you know, mm -hmm. they say everything is under our domain. And that's the point I wanted to make too when you first even, when you mm -hmm. mentioned the king repenting that it, it came from the top, which made it more effective and more inclusive. He set the example mm -hmm. for everybody. He was the leader. It's like when Eve ate the fruit, God said, Eve, where thou? No, Adam, because mm -hmm. he put Adam in charge. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a king, that's the man that the buck come and do first. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So he set the, the, the precedent, and it went down even to those animals or strangers within your gates, the Bible mm -hmm. talks about, yeah. anyone who comes mm -hmm. under your leadership mm -hmm. must get in line. Mm -hmm. You in charge of the animal, the animal ain't in charge of you. <laughs> you can love them all you want. <laughs> they subordinate to you. So if you don't feed them, they can't eat. Yeah. <laughs> What? Somebody go, go, say, go how, ahead, the, how the dog the fast? Just it, don't feed him. And teach a dog to pray. Exactly. Another thing, if you have, okay, my sister has a 15-month-old dog, right? Mm -hmm. This dog, dogs are environmental, they're relationships, so they do what in their environment. So if everybody was trying to sack lots and putting ashes on, the dog comes in his ashes too. Think about it. Yeah. Those animals did what, like they literally submitted to what their masters were doing. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they couldn't repent. But the, uh, the, the people in Israel on back then was like, okay, I'm going to put some ashes on it because it was just, and, and so that's why they mentioned how so total yeah. this whole revival thing was. They was dead serious. And mm -hmm. so even though Brother Jonah didn't want to really go because he didn't like the Assyrians, mm -hmm. he went. They had a revival campaign, but you might have asked all of that, you look like you're a false prophet. <laughs> I might see this hold that thought. I tell you. Hold, hold that thought. Yes, sir, Bruno. It's as if the entire city of Nineveh kept the Sabbath. Yeah. When you look at what was done, all work ceased, everything stopped, and everybody focused on oh, God. Uh -huh. It's like the entire city just kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I just want to come on to. to um, my sisters talked about us as Jonah, right? I, I watched a sermon a few weeks ago or so um, where a pastor was talking about the conflict going on within the Adventists, among the Adventist people, about vaccine and mm. who should take it and oh, who shouldn't yeah, take yeah, it and, yeah, yeah. and all of this kind of thing going on, right? And he said, why are we, why are we battling with this <laughs> conversation? Why are we having There's over this? And, yeah. um, and then people saying, well, you take the vaccine, there's a sign of the end. You hear what the Pope says, the sign of the end. And this, that is the sign of the end. And then you say, why are we always talking about signs and looking for signs when the Bible tells us that what the sign of Jesus signs? coming is this gospel shall be preached and all the way to the witness, then yes. the end shall come. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we ain't preaching the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> because we ain't acting like Christ. Yeah. We mm -hmm. arguing, we fighting, we fussing, we mm -hmm. uh, pulling each other down and la, 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 la. Mm -hmm. Instead of just living the love of Christ, mm -hmm. Amen. which will draw people to Christ will cause them to hear the everlasting gospel, and then the end will come. Yeah, yeah. The, to, to, to me, someone want to say something else, no? Oh, okay, um, we want to wrap up this, we reach Wednesday, right? Which is <laughs> angry, restless, missionary, right? <laughs> I get the feeling that this whole scenario and this whole thing was to benefit Jonah. Not necessarily Nineveh. <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think? You could, you could wrap it because it, 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 and if you continue to read on the chapters and how he went through and how all of a sudden he was blue mad because mm -hmm. God didn't destroy these people and then God actually gave him a, 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 a what you call it, a God that grew up yep. and then mm -hmm. withered and he mad because the, the God wasn't there for shade anymore. Um, Elaborate on that because we gotta go, and 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 I am thinking that this whole thing, God wanted to save Jonah, yeah, and and, I, and and in the process, help somebody else. But Jonah was the big focus of his his hatred, um, um, eating him inside. Mm. Um, what you think? Go ahead. And it reminds me of what I wanted to say when Ruben was talking about the Sabbath, and. Um, you know, a lot of times we just look at that one day. 
but it's bigger than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about the gospel. It's about understanding what it symbolizes. Mm -hmm. It says, I am the Lord God who sanctifies you, who makes you holy. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's about being in Christ, being in the will of God. This is what the gospel is about. Mm -hmm. Doing not your own pleasure and having your own way, but trusting, mm -hmm. having faith and belief and trusting in someone outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's either I, 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 like Lucifer. <laughs> I and I, someone said Lucifer was the first I and I man. <laughs> <laughs> or it's about only you, yeah. all yeah. to you, I surrender. This is the gospel, yep. yeah. you see? So we have to look at these symbols and types. You said all these things were written for our admonition and as examples and types so we could understand. And even like you said, God was saying to, no to Jonah, he was still teaching him. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he, he obviously didn't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't get it. He, didn't get it. He, he, had, he was exposed to the gospel. He had the oracles of God, but he still didn't really fully understand what it meant to be totally given over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the book of Job, when Job went through all his experiences and after he'd gone through it and his questioning with God and God and asking him questions he couldn't answer, mm -hmm. then Job says, I heard about God and I heard about the love of God, but now I know for myself. Jonah, even though he may have been used by God, may have just had a acquaintance relationship with God, mm -hmm. not truly knowing God, but listen, mm -hmm. God loves everyone. everyone, not just those who serve him, but those who reject him, God loves everyone. And when I come to that realization and you come to that realization, the way we live and the way we witness will definitely change. Because now we're approaching our witness and our life from the way God, from God's perspective as opposed to our own. Jonah was still looking at it from his perspective, mm -hmm. right? Even, up, even after he preached and after the repentance, he was looking at it from like, um, Brother Hannah said, I and me and this not, but I think God reached him he was able to say, you know what, God? I think I get it now. It's all about you. Yeah, the, the lesson asks a question about, um, I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but it, it's talking about how, it, how is it um, that it can benefit us, um, um, how the, working the gospel can benefit us, something yeah. to that yeah, yeah. extent, yeah. right? Yeah. And I look at it as, you know, it has to become from, from head into intellectual yes. to heartfelt, yes. Yes. you know, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And so in God's, using of Jonah um, to save both him and Nineveh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think it was a, it was a double-edged, God so loved the world that mm -hmm. he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Um, we have to come to the place, too, where we accept this gospel, yeah. not just here, not to, to okay, yeah. I read it, yeah. uh, and exactly. I, I know it, uh -huh. and I can tell you about it. Right. Yeah. But what has it done in me? Yeah. Exactly. What has it done in me? And that, Eddie said yeah. earlier how um, the, the start of everything with God is about what he is doing for us. When he brought the children of Israel, before he gave them the law, I am yes. the Lord that God brought you out of the yes. land of Egypt. Yeah. Out of the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. you know, so when, it, when we start with God and what he is doing and done for us, then the whole situation changed and we understand his love and then we respond to that love. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it, what you were, you were hitting on my last little question that I want to wrap up with is how can we keep ourselves in the love of God? Um, how can we keep our minds and, and heart focused on God? Um, I think Jonah had a problem with that. That's why he ended up in the condition that he was in. Eddie, I see you want to say something. Yeah, yes. Yes. My short answer to that is it's only um, God. It has to be mm -hmm. God because if we ever Focus think on him. that we are love, yes. that we are good, mm -hmm. if there's any good in us, you know, that's the thing. That was Lucifer's situation. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to get it from the beginning. Lucifer thought he could be good without God. Yes. And the Bible teaches us, even Jesus, when he was told, uh, when he was good. said, good master, yeah. what, was the, <laughs> what was the lesson he was trying to teach that? <laughs> There's only one. Only one. There's none good but mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And see, 
When you feel like you could do some good of yourself, there's a problem. There's a problem. Yeah, yeah. There's a problem. Yeah. So, you want to say something else? Okay. <laughs> me, me <neither>. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, we want to thank you all for tuning in and um, those who are here in the audience. And remember that we must focus on God because it's only Him that can actually keep us. It is only him that can transform our lives for the better. Thank you so much for watching as well as for attending. And um, may you enjoy the rest of the Sabbath. Thank you so much. Sister Claire, along with your panelists, for leading out in the panel discussion this morning on the restless prophet. prophet. Indeed, it was a blessing to study. We see that Jonah was restless and disobedient at the beginning and even in the middle, but he learned his lesson in the end. He eventually learned, seeing that God is a loving God, where he cares for both the saints as well as the sinners. And he gives everyone a second and a third and a fourth chance. So let us also learn the lesson from Jonah and follow Christ. Our mission story at this time for the week will be shared virtually. And this will be followed by a song of meditation by Brother Romanoff Bethel. Jesus called his followers to care for the foreigner and refugee living among us. Adventists all over the world are doing just that. Anise is a Seventh-day Adventist living just outside Washington, D.C. He grew up in the country of Jordan and spends time each year in medical mission there. Since living in the United States, he decided that a single trip each year was simply not enough. He took action to seek out refugee communities in his area to help meet their needs. We used to go out and deliver food supply to a refugee center in Gettysburg, Maryland. But we never got a chance to meet those families. Anise realized that in order to have a larger impact, he needed to get to know these families face to face. The uh, personal interaction is very important because here, as refugees from a foreign country, they have no relative or family, you know. So this has become a personal touch with them and to build the relationship and build the bridges, they have become our friends. And one of the Syrian refugee children was telling her mother, mom, I like it when the church come and visit us. Anise and others have combined community, relationship and service in a Christ-like way. They visit the many apartment homes of the refugee families and bring them items that the families may need. This has been a great way to show these families that the Adventist community truly cares about them. This has become part of my ministry. With, uh, we gather food supplies and cleaning supplies as needed and we deliver to our friends who have come from a foreign land. We bring you know, rice, olive oil, cooking oil, lentils, uh, laundry detergents, and other cleaning supplies. This work has helped many refugee families feel more comfortable. But just like Jesus' ministry here on earth, Anissa's mission is to build genuine connections. The primary focus of our relationship is to be their friend. And also, during the pandemic, we have kept that personal touch, even if we haven't come to see them, I constantly on the phone talking to them every week just to see how they are, be of encouragement to them. And that has meant a lot to me personally. Anise and many others are continuing to embrace the calling of Jesus to love and care for their neighbors who are foreigners and refugees. Please pray for Anise and his friends to continue finding ways to serve these vulnerable communities and find even more ways to show Jesus' love.
Happy Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. Now turn your eyes upon Jesus. Just mix up there. That happens sometimes. so much, Brother Bethel, for blessing us this morning in song. As we conclude Sabbath school today, let us be reminded that even as true followers of God, we still have some growing up and overcoming to do. 
we have to pray for God's power and guidance and study his word daily to overcome every form of evil, which is a form of restlessness. Jonah's reluctance to go to the people of Nineveh to preach the gospel brought him many bitter experiences. Should he had unquestionably followed God's command, he would have been blessed abundantly and restlessness would have been far from him. We save ourselves of, rest of restlessness by helping save others. I pray we realize and seek to save others in Jesus' name. Continue to be encouraged and let's live our lives as God wants us to, in peace and happiness, trusting in him despite the challenges that may come our way. In Deuteronomy 31.6, it reads, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen, Amen saints. Amen. Thank you for taking part in today's Sabbath school. Please join us, join us at Redemption Seventh-day Adventist Church next Sabbath as we have Sabbath school and divine worship. At this time, if there are any personal, minist any personal ministries um, or announcements, they will come at this time. Everyone have a blessed and happy Sabbath. Enjoy the remainder of your day. Good morning, everyone, and a happy Sabbath to one and all. We'd like to just let you know that here at Redemption, we are delighted to have you join us today. We are especially happy to have those individuals who, as we always say, are joining us on our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We know that you have choices, so we are indeed delighted that you chose to be with us today. Today, we will be celebrating the sacrament of the Holy Communion, and we are asking you to uh, bear with us as we go through that particular part of our program. It is a quarterly situation that occurs once a quarter at our church, in most of our churches, I should say. So, again, please be reminded that today we will be celebrating as such. Those persons who are viewing us via the social media platform, specifically and particularly those members of our church, would have and should have already collected the sacrament and we'll be, we will be giving instructions. This is something that we've only done once before in terms of using the prepackaged items. And so there are going to be some instructions that will be needed to be given for them. Tomorrow at 5.30, our church monthly board meeting will convene. We are asking those members of the church board to be prepared to uh, be on the link that has been sent out to you. It will be reset so that you are able to actually join us at that time. It is a specifically important meeting uh, in regards as it relates to the ACMS uh, program that we are all fully aware of. We're asking you to go over the listing that would have been sent out during our last call board meeting so that we can ensure that the item is put behind us. We want to let you know that we're delighted to have you again with us and we will be asking our musical, our musicians rather, to prepare for the praise and worship as we go into the rest of our service. Thank you and God bless.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. We invite you to open your hymnals as we lift our hearts and songs of praise to our Heavenly Father. We'll begin with hymn number 101, Children of the Heavenly Father. Safely in his bosom gather, nestling bird, nor star heaven, such a refuge ever was given. Hymn number 101. will be 442. I think that's what I had on the paper. How sweet are the tidings. Savior comes to reign. There we'll meet 
Oh 
down now, no condemnation. No condemnation now. once again for the opportunity of giving us to address you as our father to gather in the courts to worship and praise your holy name today as we celebrate the holy communion oh lord we ask that you give us the ability to look back to the time when it would have been instituted when christ would have said do this in remembrance of me we ask that as we go through the service that you forgive us of those sins that have beset us we ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask that you give us the ability to live a life that is pleasing to you so that when your coming is imminent, we will indeed all be able to look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will indeed save us. These and other unmentioned mercies we do ask in your son's name. Amen. We have a special item of music played from our media department by Sister Bridget Bastian. All right. All right. Well, I'll ask Brother Louis Claire Jr. Is he here? Louis Clare Jr.
in our hearts today with a beautiful rendition. There is a balm in Gilead. We praise God for the gift of music and singing that he has given to Brother Clear. Every time I listen to him singing, feel a sense of consecration. I believe God has gifted him to really declare the message of the gospel in song. Amen. And we praise God that he spends the time he has in this country here in the Redemption Church. Many churches would have been happy to have him every Sabbath. So we, just, we have to make much of him. And many times we run the risk of taking our important people for granted. So I just want to say, Brother Claire, you're a tremendous inspiration. You bless me with your music. I still believe for you, the sky is the limit. May God abundantly bless you. All of you who have participated in the service thus far, Claire Senior, Brother Strawn, our musician, Brother Bethel, on this day when we celebrate communion, mm -hmm. we say thank you very much for your great work in the cause of Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we look forward to communion and in these days, communion is now far and few and what? In between, right? Because of all what's going on in our world. Okay, you, 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 could, you could hear me there? Okay, all right, let me make sure. Right. Okay, make that seven dollars. So today, 
We thank God for the opportunity to be in his courts. And for those of you online, we give God praise and thanks for you. In these days when church has moved into the virtual space. So as you are worshiping with us online, we hope that you have already taken your bath and put on some good clothes because you are in church. Amen. Amen. Because I know some folk just roll over on the bed and they're in Sabbath school and in divine hour. No, we've, we've got to prepare ourselves if we are in church. So I'm giving you a little opportunity to get yourself together wherever you are and then uh, join us. It's important as we prepare today to participate in the communion service. So saints, today I want to look at the urgent call to self-examination. The urgent call to self-examination. And Seventh-day Adventists should not be new on this because we know the context in which we live. We live at a time of the great anti-typical Day of Atonement. That's the time we live in. We live at a time when we know that Jesus has gone into the most holy place. And Sister Telma, he's in the most holy place doing a work his final work of ministration, his final work of advocacy on behalf of his people, his final work of judgment. And those of us who understand that context know clearly that it's a time also of self-examination. Because when you go to the Old Testament and the day of atonement came, mean Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, people had to take time to look at themselves to examine themselves, to see if they are walking according to the word of the law. And it's important today that we take some time, take some time as we get ready to participate, take some time to reflect, not to reflect in ourselves to become self-absorbed and to be so concerned about what's going on in us, but reflect in an effort to call on Christ to be our Savior and our Lord. It's important. Now, I know, uh, and I could tell you many, many experiences people have had. People who decided that they were going to just walk into a doctor's office and just do an examination. And thank God for many of them, they discovered things that if they had discovered later, they would have been dead. Anybody knows about that? Yeah, 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 because we, we know particularly, particularly men, we don't like to go to the doctor, right? So the, the wives have to be behind us, or the female have to be behind us to say, you got to go and get your check this year, this month. And you know how many times when we listen and we go, then we discover things that if we had disco discovered after we probably would have been dead. Are you hearing me? Oh yes, that's the truth. I remember not long ago, Ellen knows, not long ago, I went to do a colonoscopy. And thank God I went. Because when the examination was done and they showed me all the, you know they had all these technological images and things, they show you all these things, they showed me and I said, wow, the doctor said, you had polyps and they were one stage away from cancer. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Don't be afraid. See, lots of people don't want to do examination because they're afraid of what they may bump into. Right? But it's important if you do it early, you don't know. Right? You don't know. So self-examination is like that. Now look at this. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of ourselves are connected. The knowledge of God and the knowledge of ourselves are connected. Without the knowledge of self, there is no knowledge of God. Without the knowledge of God, there is no knowledge of self. 
That's the words of John Calvin. So when we are looking at ourselves, we are looking at ourselves in the light of God. In the light of the knowledge of God. Where do we stand in the light of the knowledge of God? That is important for us to think about. The knowledge of self is about our creaturely condition in sin. That's the knowledge of ourselves. Ah, the knowledge of God is about his grace, it's about his love, it's about his self-disclosure. That even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. That's, that's the knowledge of God. God has declared himself to us. He has exposed himself to us. That's the knowledge of God. The knowledge of self has to do with our creaturely sinful condition. That's the knowledge of self. So, you know, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. <laughs> oh God, let me know myself, let me know you, Augustine. And then there's this one that got to me. I don't know if you all remember this guy, Ice Cube. Ice Cube said, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You remember him? It's important. We have to check ourselves. We have to check ourselves. That's important. You see, sin is not just a moral infraction, but a captivity that we need to be delivered from. Sin is not just action. It's not just moral infringement upon rules. Sin is really a power that holds us captive. And the only person that can deliver us from that captivity is God through Jesus Christ. That's the only person. So it's important to understand that today. That we can be delivered. Only God can deliver us from sin. God forgives through Jesus Christ. And gives us the Holy Spirit to fight the sinful nature. So even when God has delivered us from sin. And the power of sin. There is a fight. Because the sinful nature continues to fight. That's why God gives us through Jesus the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into our heart. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to fight the sinful nature. The sinful nature is strong, but not stronger than the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we hold on to him. So get what? Guess what? We're going to go into this quickly. Look at this. Four areas. We want to look at quickly as we Examine in this exhortation. Examine yourself before coming to the Lord's Supper. First Corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 28. I'm hoping we get these texts. Oh, mm -mm. oh, okay, you're here. Okay, first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. Let me just read this text. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 28. We talk about examining ourselves. You know, I do that all the time. We have to pause and reflect, you know. I think, I think the world is too busy. We are too active. We are moving all up and down. We have to take some time to reflect. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Examine himself. That is important. In the light of God, huh? what is this about? What is this communion service about? You know what it's about? It's about God. So love the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's about how God has related to us. So as we examine ourselves, we say, how have we related to one another? How have we related to one another in the light of how God has related to us? God has shown us mercy. Have we shown other people mercy? God has demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hey, come on. Have we done that to people? Huh? Have we loved one another as we ought to love one another? Or have we said like the sons of thunder, let the fire come down and destroy them? You see, we've got to think about ourselves. You know, I'm learning more and more. More and more. I'm learning more and more. More and more. That every one of us in here was made in the image of God. Every one of us in here has intrinsic value yes. and worth uh, that does not come from outside, but come from a divine connection with the creator God. Which means that even though we don't like one another's behavior, we don't trample on people's worth. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? 
We've got to understand that our worth is in the fact that we have one father. He made us in his own image. So look at the second one quickly. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. You know this one, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Can we just get that here quickly? Okay, 2 Corinthians. Doth not behave itself. I hope I have second. That's first, right? Am I looking? I know I'm over 50, Brother Louis, but that look like first. Okay, so second. Second, right. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Um, oh, yes. Look at it. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not that your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Examine yourself. You know, Paul said in another place in Romans, not everyone in Israel is really of Israel. You see, he said not, we, we are not just to be of the circumcision physically, but of the circumcision spiritually. Ah, huh? come on. Oh, oh, come, we ought to be spiritual Jews. That's what he's saying, right? And many times we ought to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith, if we are really committed to the teachings and the knowledge of God. Whether we be in the faith. Look at the other one quickly. Examine our ways. Lamentations 3 verse 40. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 40. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 40. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 40. Look at this verse here. It says, let us do what? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Oh, look at what Jeremiah was saying. You know, in this context, the saints were captives. They were captives over in Babylon. And here is the cry, let us examine our ways. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. Many times we are so in tune with other people's ways and we don't see our ways. We've got to examine our own bad ways. We need to examine our own bad ways. Because sometimes we, we, there is a block where we don't see our ways and we see other people's ways. Examine our ways. It's about captivity. We got to get out of our own captivity. And look at the last one. Examine our work. Galatians 6, 3 to 5. 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 Listen. For if a man think himself to be something when he's nothing he what deceiveth himself verse 4 but let every man do what prove his own work and then shall he have what rejoicing in himself alone and not in another look at this look at this for every man shall bear his what own burden and verse 6 says what verse 6 verse 6 verse 6 Verse 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Examine our work. Examine our work. Let me tell you this. It's been tough during the pandemic. I got to say to you. I have to say to you, it's been tough during the pandemic because we have to shift church into the virtual platform. We have to do so many things virtually. So some departments of the church may not even this year have had an opportunity to do exactly what they wanted to do. Huh? It's, this is the time to examine our work. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. It's the time to examine our work so we could see. We could see what can we do to advance the kingdom of God in the work that God has given us to do. Oh yes, we have to examine our work. Examine our work is so important. Examine our work. It's not that our work is going to save us. No. But there is something about falling in love with Jesus. 
it makes things all right. Yes, Amen? Amen? There's something about falling in love with Jesus. It makes things all right. So even when you don't even feel that you're valued, you keep on doing God's work because it makes things all right. It's just a little love, love talk with Jesus. I mean, somebody say amen in here. Amen. It's a little love talk with Jesus. Yeah. So this reflect, this reflect today, Brother Luke. It reflects today what we want to say to God as we go into the eating, as we go into the drinking, as we, as we go into this ministry that God has given to us. Something we say to God, we love you. We thank you for helping us when we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. We don't. That's why. That's why I like the text in Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation. We got to stop condemning one another. We got to show people the way to victory. The way to victory is Jesus. We got to stay in touch with one another. This connectedness is important. Are you hearing me? When we connect to one another, we feel a sense of belonging. That we belong with one another. We cannot disconnect. Oh, when we disconnect, saints, you know what? We lose touch. <laughs> oh, we lose touch when we disconnect. And when we lose touch, when we disconnect, we don't just lose touch, we lose people. Amen. Oh, I hope somebody hear that. Yes, we lose people. Yes, we lose people. Oh, yes, and we lose everything else. Yes. So, Brother Louis, I'm happy today. Happy today that we can examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. The psalmist says, hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. The psalmist look at himself one day and say, why are you cast down? Why are you burdening yourself? Why are you taking on people? Why are you doing that? The psalmist look at himself and talk. Sometimes you got to go in the mirror. Yeah. Especially when you come out of the bathroom and you have on no clothes, you're going there and you're in a bad mood. What's wrong with you today? No, I'm serious. I'm serious. You're taking on people and what people are saying and what people did. And no, 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 no. You got to look at yourself squarely in the face and say, what's wrong with you today? Hope thou in God. That's what he did. That's what the psalmist examined himself. Hope thou in God. Because brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. No matter what's going on in this great anti-typical anti day of atonement, you have an advocate. You have a friend in high places. Yes, you have somebody yes, up there who is interceding for you. Yeah. And let me tell you this, even you, when you see the messy places and the abysses in your soul, yeah. don't run from them. Jesus went through every one of them for you. Yeah. Oh, every one of them he went through for you. Took your sin upon himself. Yeah. My sin upon himself. Oh, yeah. Huh? And now he has the right to stand up for me in heaven. He has the right to stand up for you in heaven. Today we reflect on the price that was paid at the cross of Calvary. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace. Let the church say thank you, Jesus. What a powerful message. God is in this place. Our hymn of praise, be, our hymn will be three, three, six. There is a fountain filled with blood. Draw from Emmanuel Bain. And sin is plunged beneath the flood. Lose all those guilty care and shame.
Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 and 24 and I read in your hearing for I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, we feel so unworthy this afternoon to come before you. But because we know that you will welcome us, we come. O oh, Lamb of God, we come. We know that we need a cleansing, dear Jesus. Every part of this body Help us as we continue to sing these songs, Lord, and when we look at and see the depth that Jesus Christ went to, give us a chance to get to heaven. We say thank you, Jesus. Help us to surrender our lives completely to you. And now, oh God, as we set, we're set to take part of this communion today. Lord, help us to realize that we need even beyond this. We want to live the way we ought to live. We realize that we go wrong so many times, dear Jesus. And you are so patient. You are so loving and so kind to forgive us each time. Oh, Jesus. Help us to be more sensitive to what is wrong and what is right to do. We pray that thou would come in amongst us, Jesus. We come asking for another chance, and when we leave here this afternoon, dear Lord, Lord, help us each to pledge that we're going to live for you. We're going to live like you. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for forgiving us endless amount of times, dear Jesus. Lord, we know we, we worry the Holy Spirit sometimes, I'm sure, but we want to get beyond that. We are looking forward to your soon coming and we want to go to heaven. We want to go and live with you eternally. Strengthen us spiritually so that we might enjoy the kingdom. Then we all get to heaven, Jesus. I know we won't be able to stop singing. We'll be singing and shouting the victory. Thank you. Thank you for your death on the cross. You gave up everything for us, Lord. Be accepted in your precious name. Thank you for hearing us. Amen. Those of you online, this is the time when we will participate in the bread. 
This bread is the emblem, the symbol of the broken body of Christ on the cross. It is not the literal body of Christ. We are, now, we are not physically crucifying Christ afresh. We are commemorating his death on the cross and anticipating his second coming. When on that day, we'll have an opportunity somewhere in the eternal future to eat with Christ at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Under all the circumstances, we would have been doing the foot washing service here. That is done at home. So now we say let's all eat to the glory of God and in anticipation of the second coming of Christ. We'll have a special item of music by Sister Bridget Bastian. We play it from our media department. Special item of music.
Our second scripture reading comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, which reads as follows. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks and praises unto you, who is the creator of us all. We ask in a special way, the Heavenly Father, that as you breathe upon us your breath, Lord, it's only you and you alone who bear our iniquity. Amen. Oh, Father, search our heart. Try us, oh God. Forgive us, oh Heavenly Father, where we have went short. Lord, we know, God, that you are our Father. So, Father, right now we pray in a special way for the wine. We pray, O oh God, as a symbol, O oh God, that is your blood that is shed on Calvary Cross. O oh God, bless this wine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're about to drink the fruit of the vine the symbol of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. And from day to day, there's still power in the blood. After all these years, the blood has never lost its power. There's still power in the blood. And as we commemorate today, shed blood of Christ and his coming oh we will know when we see him by the nail prints in his hands let us all drink to the glory of God and dedicate ourselves for that awesome coming soon and very soon we'll meet him in the air Let's drink. Amen. We'll have another special item of views by Sister Bridget Bastian. We play it again from our media department.
I love the Lord. He heard my cry, and he pitied all my groans. Sometimes you want to pray, and you only could groan in the spirit, but he understands it. This morning, or this afternoon, is before we sing, why we sing in our song of praise and thanksgiving. We normally hear at the church, we, hear, we collect a Samaritan purse. And the Samaritan purse is to help those who are less fortunate. I know you might say that we have took up uh, offering already, but you cannot be God-giving. And this, this, this special often just, you know, they help. There's a lot of need, like the pastor said earlier, this pandemic throwed a lot of people off. So brothers and sisters, let us give and give with our whole heart. Our song of thanksgiving is to God be the glory. Yeah. And you know, that's what we have to We have to give God the thanks. Give him the glory and the praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Blessing. Thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, 
And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will uphold thee. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And through the, the flood, it will not overflow. When you walk through the water, you will not drown. Because, brothers and sisters, the God that made the heaven and the earth, he is the one who is with us. We leave here covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. We leave here in the power of the merits of the cross. Knowing that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Oh God and Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to celebrate today. Oh, it's a healing kind of celebration. Oh, our health is springing forth speedily. Because at the cross you paid the price. By your stripes we are healed. We thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace and power. Now I say the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you abundantly. This is